Now, I've, I know of people, I know of churches, I know of people that preach and say, you can't, you don't go to your past, you don't have, um, you know, none of us could have a curse and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's what I say to that. Blah, blah, blah. Because we have seen too many people get set free. Right. We have seen too many people's lives transformed. Too many. Doesn't mean you don't have a pro uh, an issue or a problem, but it means breakthrough. Debbie, come up here. Can you just share a minute? Now, Debbie Tag came, uh, has been with us for a couple years. <laughs> Debbie Tag. De Debbie Taglieri. And Debbie. Be and Debbie. <laughs> Debbie had some issues in her past, right? Would you like to share about your illegitimacy and the issues there and the the, 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 the bastard curse? Give me the mic. <laughs> Anything for you. Thank you. I love her. Um, well, when I was uh, 19, I was unsaved, I was unwed, and I was pregnant. Came from a very bad background, family background, same Sicilian dysfunction. Um, and I, <laughs> and I had my son, my wonderful, beautiful gift, um, who's now 40. And, um, when he was three, I was looking at him and I was kind of annoyed at him for looking like his dad who was gone out of the picture. And, um, I realized that I could not be his mom the way he needed me to be if I didn't forgive his father. Now I didn't know what I was doing. He just kind of left the table, and I said to God, because he was the only one I really had to talk to, I can't be angry at him and love him, so you need to fix this. And I really did just leave it there and focus on loving and raising my son. 17 years later, Adam met his dad for the first time, and as he approached us, I realized I wasn't angry. I, wasn't, I, I was filled with compassion for him. Um, he missed this wonderful life. Um, and he can't get that back. We went home and we pulled every spare copy of Adam's life from babyhood up and put it together for him and gave it to him as a Christmas gift um, so that he could at least see that. They have a great relationship now. He's got two sisters and a brother. They're very close. Um, and, and we're good together. He and I are good together. We, you know, we sat together at the wedding. My son met a girl in church. They both serve the Lord, but you have to choose. You have to choose to forgive. You can ask God, but if you don't play your part, you know, it's like here, you know, I'm sick, but I'm not taking the medicine you prescribed. But we also, Adam had to choose to forgive. But then I found King of Kings almost 20 years ago. Yeah, because then I learned about all of this. And so even though it seemed like everything was great, we all, we worked on this. Cindy, Tricia, uh, Pastor Easter, we all kind of worked on this together. And I learned to go and break it officially, formally, break it from Adam's life, from my life. Um, and, and God has been just so faithful in, in doing that. Wait, wait. So tell them when we prayed and broke the curse, what happened immediately? about the, um, the job increase uh, and, the, and the inheritance and your, your apartment. This is the good stuff. <laughs> this is the good stuff. This is the good stuff. So I, I had gone to church and I was up front and I don't know, and I, I was hesitant in the beginning. And after, so we were in the high school, Burns High, and after service, you know, after worship, pastor said, greet somebody. And I turn and she's staring at me. And she said, I want you to come, come back up here after service because you've got something on you and I want to break it off. And she left me like that. We were in a hurry. And I'm sitting in service going, ew. <laughs> <laughs> so I went up and we prayed. And, and she prayed to um, break all these curses. Um, and she prayed an inheritance over Adam, and you know, and um, it was specific words, inheritance. I would, I would have an inheritance for Adam. That was Sunday. Monday, I went to work, and my boss came out of his office, and I was living in a condo that he owned. That was part of my work package. And he said, my wife and I were talking yesterday, Sunday, 
and decided that there is a way, and I called my lawyer, I don't know who calls their lawyer on a Sunday, uh, my boss, <laughs> wealthy people, and he said, we found a way that I can give you that condo legally without you paying for it. So, so it took 10, 10 years as he transferred year by year a percentage of the condo, and in December of 2018, 10 years exactly, um, was the last transfer. Um, but he did say, when he, when he came out that day, he did say, we want you to have an inheritance Jesus. to leave your son. <laughs> Which freaked me out. So, and it, and, it, and it came to pass, but again, obedience, as Trisha said, obedience, forgiving, walking in forgiveness, and choosing to forgive. And you got a big bonus, and your stove that didn't work for 10 years. Worked. Working. Stove worked. Um, washing machine stopped leaking. I mean, like in, in 24 hours, all this stuff happened. Um, and, and again, you know, Adam uh, is, is doing great with his dad, and his, you know, his dad just came through again. Um, thank you all for you who prayed for Adam this week. He was uh, admitted to the hospital, and everything's great, and he's fine. Your prayers are great. Um, and the, the, that morning, the next morning, I said to the Lord, um, you know, they need a car. The car died, and, and they need a car, and I don't have the means to give them a new car, but you do, so you have to fix this. That's pretty much all I say. You have to fix this. Later that day, his dad called me and said, I talked to Adam, but I don't think he's giving me the whole story of what's going on. So I told him some things, and then I said, and by the way, he needs a new car. And he said, oh, all right, I'll give him a car. <laughs> so they picked up the car last night. Come on. So awesome. it's just, you know, doing it. It's, it's accepting that God is our, I mean, he's just, I just say, Dad, fix this. Um, and he does. He comes through. But you, you've got to do your share. You've got to forgive. It's a huge, big thing. Um, and, you know, Adam chose to forgive. And I said, they have a, I was just at his dad's house for Adam's 40th birthday party. We do it. We're all fine. And it's, it's a life choice. But breaking the curses. I mean, we did, we walked through this, Cindy, Easter, a lot of times at their lap on the floor in tears. But we did it, and we walked through it, and I would go home, and I would walk through it with Adam, and I said he, he met his beautiful wife, the, more than I prayed for, uh, in a daughter-in-law, in church. They both serve in church, so... It cup, yes, it really does. When you ask for a testimony, I can say which one, because God just, just blesses. He just does, so we walk in it. Yes, and, and for the very first time, you know, I always thought of Adam as my son with God. He's my son with God. And, and even though things with his dad have been fine, I just never acknowledged that he was our child. Um, and when I was speaking to him on the phone that night, I said to him, he's our son, and we, as his parents, we have to do what we can, no matter how old they are, because it doesn't matter if they're four or 40, that, this doesn't change. And, and I realized that it was the first time I'd ever said, our son. And, you know, I, I, I got to, I was driving, we were talking on the phone, I got to where I was going, and I just stopped, and I said to the Lord, did I say that? <laughs> and it's just, it was, it was a blessing for me, too, to finally, you know, have that ability to share my son as a parent with his parent. And, and it was a big, it really was a big deal for my heart as well, so... Good.